All right, welcome everybody. Uh, what is up, nerds? This is Mr. Storm, and today I'm going to show you how to build Pong. This is going to be the first part. We're really just going to cover how to set up the game visually, and then we will, um, in the next video, we'll get into, we'll start doing the programming and make sure that everything looks great. Um, so I just started a brand new project. Uh, I named it Pong, as you can see up here. Um, I haven't saved anything yet. I literally just opened up the project. Um, first of all, before we even get started, I want to make sure that we set up our folders properly. So I'm going to go down here. Oops, excuse me. I'm going to go down here to the project tab, and I'm going to look here. I have this. Uh, I have it set up for two column view, which is my preferred way of looking at things. Um, some of you may have it in a one column layout. I, I find that kind of confusing. I like to have the two columns, so all you have to do to change it is just do that right there. Just go to two column view. Um, and I see I have this assets folder. And now Unity will automatically create an assets folder for you as soon as you start a new project. But I want to add a few more things to it. So uh, I'm going to go in here inside the assets folder itself. I'm going to right click and create a new folder. I'm going to call it scenes. Now we're only going to have one scene in this game, but let me just name it scenes. And then I want to file and save my scene as. I'm just going to call it uh, main because it's going to be the only scene in my game. Call it main. Now it's going to put it natively. It's going to put it right into my assets folder. And I actually wanted to go in the scene. So I'm just going to drag it and pop it right into there. So now when I double click, I can see that I have it in my in my scenes folder. So I want to add a few more folders to my asset folder. Uh, first of all, I want to add a sprites folder. Okay, because that's where all my artwork is going to go for my objects, which we'll get into that in just a second. And then I'm also going to create a scripts folder because when we start writing the code, we want to make sure that the scripts go into the right folder and so everything's nice and organized. All right, so my game is set up. It's ready to go. Um, now I can start manipulating things. I can look at the objects that I have in my main scene, right? And so this main scene has literally one object in it, my main camera. So when I click on that, I can look over here and see the properties of that main camera in the inspector view. I can see my camera preview down here. Now, if you remember Pong, Pong has a really nice uh, black and white color scheme. And so this camera preview, the background being this kind of cool looking blue, it's really not going to work for the game. So I want to change the background of my camera first off. So I'm going to go in here, click the color selector, and I'm just going to go to deep black. Just zero on all of my, my RGBA values. So I'm going to go for a nice deep black. The next thing I want to do is I want to change the camera size. I'm going to set it to about 15 right now. Um, just because I know when I import my art assets, they're going to be a little bit larger than what I'm looking for. So I'm going to change the camera size. And I'm going to turn off HDR and MSAA because these are going to you know, smooth out the game a little bit. And I kind of don't want to do that because I want it to be nice and blocky and old school feeling. So I'm going to turn those off. Um, after that, everything looks good with my camera. So now I can get into importing actual assets into the game. So uh, in my sprites folder, it is empty now. There's nothing in there, but I want to import some assets. Now, I've given you the resources to download these assets, um, so they should be saved on your desktop somewhere. I saved mine on my desktop in a folder called Pong Resources. I'm going to show you how to import those resources into Unity itself. So I'm going to right-click inside my sprites folder. I'm going to go to Import New Asset. And now when I go to my desktop, so let's go to desktop, I can find my Pong resources, Pong resources, and now I have these art assets that you want to bring in. I'm going to just go ahead and select all of them. Uh, I'm going to bring them in. Actually, I'll just do them one at a time, I guess. So my horizontal wall, and I'm going to import my vertical wall. So I have them both in there now. So I have horizontal wall and vertical wall. Now you'll notice if I take this and I bring it out in here, it's way too tiny. Uh, that's too small for me to actually be able to do anything with. 
So I'm going to get rid of that right now. I'm actually just going to delete that. And I'm going to select the sprite itself in the folder and look at my inspector. So now I'm, I'm looking at the options here. The one thing I want to really pay attention to is this item called pixels per unit. It's set to 100. Um, and if we hover over the tooltip, it says how many pixels in the sprite correspond to one unit in the world. Well, I want, I want one pixel to represent one unit. Okay, so I'm going to change this from 100 to 1. Because if it looks at 100 pixels as if it's one unit, then it's going to make those things really, really tiny. One pixel per one unit is going to make it nice and large, and it's going to correspond exactly to how I want, how big I want my game to be. So one pixel per unit. And then the other thing I want to look at is the filter mode. I want to change it from bilinear to no filter to point so that whenever there's some movement, it doesn't try to add some kind of weird blur to it. So I'm going to click apply. And now when I drag in my wall piece, it's going to be exactly the size I want. Now it's not exactly how big I want it because my camera is zoomed in still a little bit too far. So I'm going to go into my main camera. I'm going to pop everything out just a little bit more until, hey, that looks pretty good. All right, so my camera set it to 20. So this wall piece looks okay there. We're going to move, move them around. I'm going to grab another horizontal to make the top of my screen. And then I'm going to make sure I, before I drag in some vertical walls, I'm going to make sure I remember to change my pixels per unit and my filter to point. I'm going to apply those and then bring in my vertical walls. Now, a little thing about positioning. So this does not look exactly the way I want it to, right? I want my walls to match up perfectly. I'm going to start with this top wall. If we look over here in the inspector, I see some values in my transform property. So the transform position, I have X and it's at, you know, 0 0.1, blah, 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 blah. I want this to be centered horizontally on my screen. So I'm going to actually make, turn that to zero. It's nearly there anyway. And I think I'm going to probably set this to 13. Okay. Now on the bottom, I can do the same thing for the centering horizontal, but instead of 13, I'm going to make this negative 13. Now I'm probably actually going to have to adjust those. I'll make that 14 and 14. See what that does. Maybe do 16. Yeah, 16 looks about right. And then down here, I'll do the same thing. Instead of negative 13, negative 16. Okay, that's close. Uh, instead of 16, let's do 15.5. Okay, perfect. And then negative 15.5. Now, I like to move things around on the screen using numbers in the transform uh, position. That way I don't have to try to eyeball things and get them exactly where I want them. All right, so my horizontals are where I need them to be. Let's look at my verticals. So instead of changing, instead of zeroing out the X value, I want to actually zero out the Y value. So I'm going to zero that out. And then my X, I will set that to negative 23. Nope. Let's try 25. Ooh, almost perfect. Look at that. That's almost exactly where I want it to go. So let's do this, this wall as well. Zero out the Y and make this 25 positive. So now I have this perfect box that's exactly the way I want it to look. And when I look at my game view, oh, that's, it's zoomed in way too far. When I look at my game view, well, that doesn't look very good at all. Oh, why is my camera so squishy? Hmm. 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 So I saw some of you had the same problem here. Your camera got squished in. Uh, it's, I think it's because, well, I'm not sure. I'm just going to size this just, just for this first project, just so we can make sure we see it. I'm going to size it so that my camera will actually show my game. There we go. Just going to make sure it covers everything. Um, I think it just takes the, the size of the screen you're, you're uh, viewing it on, and it kind of sets the camera for that height. So I'm just going to keep it like that. That'll be fine. All right. So I have my horizontal walls, my vertical walls. Now I have my actual box. Now I'm not done with these yet because 
I need to actually apply a collider to these because if I don't, then when objects interact with these, they'll actually just fly right through them because there will be no collider to tell it that it needs to be kind of solid. So with the wall selected, and I can actually do this with all four of them because I just add them all at the same time. I'm going to select them all at the same time, add a component, and I'm going to go to Physics 2D and Box Collider. So now if I zoom in, you can see there's this nice green line around my boxes, which means that it now is a collider. These are all collider objects. Perfect. All right, so now I have my game uh, area set up. Next thing I want to do is I want to bring in my center line that goes right down the middle. So I'm going to import a new asset, a new sprite. So I'm going to make sure I'm still in my sprites folder, right? I'm in sprites. Right click, import new asset, and I'm going to do the dotted line. Import that. I'm going to make sure I make these changes, the requisite changes for our pixels per unit. And I'm going to make the change for the filter as well. And then when I bring in my dotted line, oh, I got to click apply, bring it somewhere roughly halfway through. And I'm just going to actually zero that out. So it's zero on the X, zero on the Y. So that way it's directly in the middle of my game. Perfect. All right, so now my, my dotted line is there. Now I don't need to apply a box collider to the dotted line because I need objects to be able to go through this, right? So I'm going to bring in my paddle, right click, import new asset, and I'm going to bring in my racket or my paddle. Import that. And again, change the pixels per unit to one. And I'm going to change the filter. And then I'm going to bring in a racket. I'll put it, oh, apply. <laughs> put it roughly where I want it in the screen, just kind of right there. And if I look at my values over here, I have negative 21. That's good. And I'll zero it on the Y. Okay. I will bring in another racket and I will put it at positive 21 and zero it on the Y so that they're the same distance from the wall and they are exactly even with one another. Now the rackets themselves also need to have box colliders attached to them. So I'm going to select them both, go to add component, Physics 2D, and a 2D box collider. So now I have a box collider around each of these. But the other thing I need, because now what I want to do is I want to be able to move these up and down so that, you know, I can actually uh, catch the ball as it comes at me and I can, re you know, reflect it off. So in order to move these, they need to be physical objects in the game world. So they need to be able to uh, change their positions over time. Instead of just blocking objects as they interact, I need to be able to change parts of their transform values. So in this case, the position, I need to be able to change the Y position on the transform. So um, I'm going to add a rigid body 2D to both of, the, both of the rackets. And I can actually select them both again. Click Add Component, Physics 2D, rigid body 2D. And so down here, I can see I have some other options. I'm not going to play with those right now because I just want to show you the difference between just a simple box collider and what a rigid body 2D does. I'm going to play the game. And we can see that my paddles fall down to the bottom of the screen. That's because rigid body 2D objects immediately have gravity attached to them, right? And gravity pulls objects, pulls, pulls objects to the bottom. Um, now, my colliders are working, or at least this bottom one is, because my rackets, the colliders on the rackets, are interacting with the colliders on the bottom of the screen. So that way I can't actually push the paddles through the bottom of the screen. We can actually test the top as well. It's pretty creative, pretty fun way to do it. I'm going to select, I can just select one of them. I'm going to change this one racket. I'm going to change its gravity scale. Instead of being 1, I'm going to change it to negative 1. And then I'll play the game. So 1, so this one that I changed to negative 1, it actually floats up. This one, because it's positive 1, it goes down. So you can actually do reverse gravity in a game as well. But that's not what I want for the game. 
what I want is I want these both to have a gravity scale of zero, so they don't go anywhere. So I'm going to change these to zero. Let's test that out again to make sure that it actually works. And it does. So my game looks the way I need it to look. My paddles don't go floating off into random directions. And yeah, there's one more change I want to make to it just to ensure that when we get get into having, you know, the balls colliding with the paddles and whatnot, um, they don't actually rotate themselves, which is another problem. We don't want it to rotate. So I am going to select both of the rackets again, go into the rigid body 2D options and look for constraints. What I want to do is I want to constrain its rotation, keep it from rotating in the Z axis so that when the ball hits, let's say it hits on the corner here, it doesn't actually rotate this paddle so it turns sideways or, you know, goes cattywampus, right? So I'm going to freeze the rotation there. Now at this point, we can bring in our final art asset for the game. Uh, I'm gonna right click and import new asset and it's the ball. I wanna import the ball asset. Make the same changes here, one pixel per unit and change the point to no filter. And then I can bring a ball into the center of the game. Okay, so now my ball is there. Now what, think about it for just a second. The ball needs to move through, through physical space, right? and it needs to be able to collide with objects. So what two things do I need to add? Yes, absolutely. The thing that you're screaming at your computer right now is 2D box collider and rigid body 2D. You are absolutely correct. So I'll do a rigid body 2D first, and then I will add a box collider as well. Now with this rigid body, again, we don't want gravity to affect the ball. We don't want it to fall immediately. So we're gonna turn off the gravity scale and we are also going to freeze rotation on the ball. And the reason why we're doing that is because this is not, it's not a, uh, if, let's take a look at it. It's actually just a square, right? This is a square. It's not a circle. So if we didn't freeze the rotation, when it starts bouncing around the world, it's actually going to rotate in weird ways. And instead of hitting, you know, this solid face hitting the solid face of the paddle, it might have rotated so the so the corner hits and then it'll cause it to ricochet and do all kinds of weird movement when we get in the physics. We don't want that. Um, another thing I can show you real quick because we're already zoomed in and it's fun. If I put this exactly in the middle of a square, you can see why that um, one unit, uh, one pixel per unit is actually effective. Because if we look at this grid, we see that these are the game units, right? These are all the game units. And this is a single pixel. It's just one pixel of white square. And it fits perfectly inside of these game units. So that's how we can measure out the size of the objects in our game. Okay, perfect. So now we have a perfectly built, ready to go Pong um, environment. And when I play, it'll look just like this. And uh, next time we're going to get into scripting so we can make these objects actually move. We can make the ball move back and forth. We can make the paddles, uh, allow the paddles to go up and down. This will be player one. This will be player two controlled with different key, uh, keys on the keyboard. Uh, so you can play against a friend. Um, but we're not going to get into the programming now because that will take a while. And uh, we want to save that for the next episode. So I will see you next time. Um, thank you very much for paying attention. And uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of this series. All right.